I kind of imagine one of those uh, bingo ball machines that the balls are rolling and then one gets stuck. Mornings, waking up for sure. Uh, driving in the shower, doesn't everybody. That's like the songs popping into my, into my brain. But just the last thing I heard that triggers something in my brain and then I'm singing that for the day, so. I turn off the radio or the television and the music stays with me. It'll start and end with sort of the same key or musical note and my brain will just sort of loop that over and over and over again. I'm doing something which takes minimal attention, like I'm walking outside. The longest I've ever noticed was about three weeks. Um, that was extremely annoying after the first week or so. <laughs> that it sounds happy to me, very happy that it, it's stuck in my head and forever. <laughs>to try and understand more about earworms, why people get them, and why they stay in people's heads for as long as they do. Music has a very special quality for me and just about everybody that I talk to in terms of its meaningfulness, its emotional connection. When we find a particular piece of music stuck in the mind for a long period of time, that may say something about that human relationship to music. So what the expectation is could be any sort of a pattern. The individual patterns don't matter, but the relationships do. So I'm bringing the science, the hearing science to the project, trying to look at what neural structures might be involved in, in earworms. The cognitive nature of earworms, um, the musical nature of earworms, and from my perspective, the reported experience of earworms. Having worked with this earworm phenomenon now for the past year has really even heightened my awareness of the lengths songwriters go to make this one specific part of the song attractive to us. So those things that tend to be sticky, why do they remember it? Because they can't quite figure it out. There's something a little bit missing or off or incomplete about it. Those unexpected elements are oftentimes what somebody loves the best about a piece of music. So one of the great things about being involved in this project is that when everybody knows you're involved in this project, everybody tells you you're their earworms all the time. It's almost like a, a puzzle my brain has to solve before I'm allowed to move on with my next thought. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, that just would not go away. And no matter how many times I tried to listen to something else, as soon as I stopped listening, it would just come right back, so. From anywhere from an hour to, you know, uh, a, a couple hours later, or even sometimes shorter. The specific earworm is Tchaikovsky Symphony No. 5 horn solo. It was Frank Sinatra. And I read something about something it had to do with blue eyes, and I remember they called him Old Blue Eyes. It happens in a specific room in the University of Arizona School of Music, and it happens after a specific ensemble rehearsal. But then I also have these earworms that will last upwards of a week or two weeks, sometimes longer. I was hoping that if I could complete the song, it would sort of help scratch that itch, but it didn't. <laughs> the rhythm is either simple or memorable in the, in the sense that it it matches somehow what's easy to remember for me. My brain, without me realizing it, says, we want to keep listening to this because it's awesome. The Arizona Earworm Project's interdisciplinary research study examines music cognition, music theory, and the reported earworm experience with the aim of discovering how these perspectives intersect and uncovering novel hypotheses about earworms. We've created an online survey, and it asks them to share with us their experience of music, a certain amount of demographic information about who they are, what their musical background is, and then tell us what their earworms are. 
Then we're bringing them in and we actually run them through a standardized music perception test, which isn't about music knowledge, it's about basically your auditory system's ability to pick up things like a change in rhythm. Again, the question is, do people with more earworms, do they tend to have, score higher on this test or lower? And if so, is it on all parts or is it on just one of the parts, say rhythm melody? We're gathering a list of songs and song snippets that people report as earworms. These are songs or parts of songs that get stuck in people's heads. And so we hear just these three notes, and it's a very simple rhythm, dut, 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 but we hear it in two different settings within the measure. Work I've done on song analysis and in my mind what the properties of a good pop song are and if there's a correlation between that and the reported earworms that people say are getting stuck in their head. And we've asked you to participate because you've told us that you've had earworms. We've recruited people to participate in structured interviews where they actually describe to me what the earworm thing is for them. And usually the ones in the morning t tend to be either from older movies or older songs or little jingles. The melodic or harmonic or musical material that gets stuck mm -hmm. versus those people who say it's the words that get stuck. Right. Uh, what were they talking Popular, about? country, classical, jazz, all of these different styles have elements that can become earworms depending on the person. And again, that's it. And again, an earworm can be just the thing I need to get a certain melody, line, or even a harmony. I prefer harmonies to stick in my head, whether I'm singing or playing. Uh, earworms are very, very beneficial to me in that regard. That the lyrics are the distillation of my emotion at that time. And it'll bring me to a time that was very, very sad, and I, I sit with that emotion for a while, but they're all attached to emotions. But if it's something that is really annoying, then I want to get rid of it as quickly as possible. There will be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. One day when the world is free. It rolling around in my head as an earworm, I think is a result of its direction and its musical emotions connecting with me at a deep level. There will be love and laughter and joy ever after. Just you wait and see. It's the emotional power associated with it that makes it stick longer. That's been with me for as long as I can remember. They're companions, but they're elucidating whatever your emotional, my emotional reality is at that point, and they can be a source of, of guidance and insight, I believe. At the conclusion of the initial 10-month study, the Arizona Earworms Project's co-investigators reflect upon the study's interdisciplinary model, outcomes, and opportunities for further research. The average performance of the mean here is the average performance on the tuning score across the group. Given that our question all along has been why music, the interdisciplinary makeup of our team has been vital. I think in the end it's going to allow us to have hypotheses that no one of us would have generated, uh, but when we bring it all that together, I think it'll allow us to generate some completely novel hypotheses. Some of the things I've learned uh, have been just about the music itself. And then the long is... The long is up, uptown funk you up. That's, yeah, so that's a short, short long as well. I remember one time my friend the next day said, I, this Iron Maiden song keeps running through my head. And I said, well, that's, a, that's very strange. And they'll say, here's the song that stuck in my head. And it's not the last one they heard. It's not the first one they heard. It wasn't the one they liked the most. And so you're left with this question, why that song? We've had people say that they're very involved in reading, studying, writing, working, creating something. As soon as that stops, and instead they drive their car or wash the dishes, there's music in their mind kind of taking up some of the extra space. But what was amazing was how many people called them educational. And so one might suspect that it's because they're trying to work out a song or they're trying to remember the lyrics for something or et cetera, and that it actually helps to have this repeat over and over in your head.
And for some people, that threshold of annoyance, for lack of a better term, is five minutes. And for some people, it's an hour. And for some people, it's a day. It turns out that those people with the highest earworms, a uh, number of earworms at least reported, are really good in terms of their melody abilities and less so in their harmonic abilities. A roommate is in the next room singing the same song aloud and how they'll kind of realize that there's a, there's a shared experience to earworms um, that could be looked at culturally. But that's something we're gonna have to study further. But those are the sort of more complex relationships that have come out of the project. Maybe it is the case that earworms are one of those things that in terms of what which songs get stuck, it is just a personal thing. Each person has a unique perspective on this particular experience, which is the earworm. Well, if earworms provide us with a window into what our brains are doing when we're processing music, then that would be a wonderful thing for me and hopefully others to learn about. I don't feel like stress or that they stress me out or, um, uh, yeah, I feel like a sense of warmth. I could still carry it with me even though I don't have an instrument to play. I just take it in my head. So that's fine. It's been a long day without you, my friend, but I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Um, and that got stuck in there. And I think because it directly relates to how I've been feeling recently. Like a connection with my family <laughs> somehow. I, I am not sure why, uh, because we don't sing all those songs together, but brings me back memories. There's so much that's public about music and public about our lives and these earworms and the stuff that's floating around in my brain. Uh, it's really just for me. I think being the kind of person who's prone to having music stuck in my head has been beneficial in the sense of being able to draw upon all these songs, um, especially with having children. A song which meant a lot when I was 20 might come back to me, and now it's a different. But it also means that there's some continuity between me at 20 and me at 66. I think it's really enjoyable to sort of get at the heart of a song and really understand what makes it work and what makes it beautiful. And it, it kind of knits your history together in that way.